guys i'm back with another video um today i have a couple of things that i want to talk to you guys about some some questions that i've been getting and then others just information that i think you guys should know as nursing majors whether you attend my school prairie view a m university or any school um the first thing i want to talk about is what happens after you're accepted into nursing school so after you have submitted your application and they've told you that you are accepted um, I also want to be talking, I also want to talk to you guys about what classes you should be taking in high school and if you're in college, more specifically if you're in college. Um, mm -hmm. My appeal decision on that psychology class that I failed, I finally got an appeal decision. Um, I also want to talk to you about why you shouldn't, should not withdraw from a university like I did and when to apply for nursing school. I've been getting a lot of questions on, so when do I actually start the process on applying to nursing school? So today, hopefully I can break it down in a way that you guys will understand. So let's get started. Okay, so the first topic is what happens after you're accepted into nursing school. So after you're accepted into nursing school, and I'm speaking from experience, how my school does it, you're emailed a decision on whether or not you are accepted. Um, the people that I'm going to nursing school with, we kind of freaked out because they send the letters in alphabetical order and it seems like they only did so many letters a day. So some of us were like, oh my God, I didn't get my letter today. I'm probably not going to get accepted. We were freaking out, but we just overworried ourselves. They did it in alphabetical order. So they send out your acceptance letter in the email. Um, after you get your acceptance letter, the next thing that they sent out to us was a packet of shots and immunizations that we have to have for nursing school. Um, we had to have a TB test. We had to get the hepatitis B and C immunization. And I think it's the hepatitis C immunization. It happens over a six month period. Um, so if you can, if you know you're going to nursing school and you're feeling really confident in yourself, go ahead and start on your hepatitis C um, immunizations just so you have it out the way. At my school, you can start nursing school if you don't have it completed. I think it's like a round of three shots maybe. So as long as you have that first shot done and you're in process of doing it, they'll still let you in. But just to avoid, you know, a lot of confusion or doing a lot, you can go ahead and start on that now. Um, so we had to get that. We had to get the flu shot. There's blood work that we have to get done. Um, it's a lot, like a lot of specifics. I might attach them around just so you guys can know um, what you need to be working on or getting. I know it can be expensive if you don't have insurance, but in nursing school, you have to have your own insurance. Um, we have to have a background check. We have to do a drug test. We haven't gotten any information on that yet. But after you do all of this stuff, I think the website is called Castle Branch or something like that. We're going to upload all these documents onto Castle Branch. And with each shot and immunization that we get, they want a certain document to like verify that you've gotten it. So the document basically has to say, oh, you were tested for this. You were negative. They want to know like the lot number. It's kind of a lot. So you have to make sure you follow step by step directions so that you won't have to Go back to your doctor or waste any more time doing stuff. Um, so after we do all of that, um, we are supposed to be getting an email sometime this month on um, making our schedules for nursing school. Um, so basically, we meet with our advisors. They tell us what classes that we have to take, and then we pick those classes. And I got on there earlier today and I was looking at the degree plan. I don't know how new it was, but um, just looking at the classes that we have to take, it seems like most of the classes in nursing school are only once a week. And some of them are like a lecture in a lab, like A&P is, and some of them are long, some of them are short. So for some of them, it looked like one class was maybe like nine to 10, 50. But then on another one, since I'm not in nursing school yet, I'm not sure how it works. Another one was like 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Maybe that's our clinicals. Um, I'm not sure. When I find out, I will let you know. And then after we make that schedule, we start class. So after you accept it, you get your acceptance letter. You have to do immunizations and shots and also get the record that you got those. Um, you have to do your background check in your book, your drug test. You upload all of this into a website so that the hospital can see your files and see what you do and you don't have. 
make your schedule and then you start okay class. i'm not sure if every university does this i'm pretty sure it's different at every university but at my university after you get accepted we have a white coat ceremony which i had this past weekend um and basically the white coat ceremony is just showing that you've passed all your prerequisites you've applied to nursing school you've gotten accepted and you're basically in route to go to nursing school if you pass your background check and your drug test and there they basically give us our white coat and you know white coat is like the symbol of medicine you're in the medical profession the medical field and it's just a nice little ceremony that my university does for us so yeah and i know the next thing on my list was what classes you should be taking but i just want to do this really quick my appeal decision on the psychology class that i failed so i don't know if you guys have been following me or paying attention but i did take general psychology and fail it at prairie view a&m university my teacher gave me a d I went on the process of appealing it. It took a total of five months to get an appeal decision, which it should not. It should have taken less than a month. But <laughs> not going to get into why it took so long. It's just some things on the university's behalf. Um, so she finally regraded my paper that she gave me a zero on. And she was, <laughs> let me not talk about her. She gave me a 58 on my paper, a 58 on my paper. So instead of me having a D, I now have a C. And you know, as a nursing major, you cannot have more than two C's on your transcript. So this was my first C. So I just took the C and I'm happy that I got a passing grade. But of course now I can't get another C. Um, I don't know why she couldn't do this in the first place. But at, at least I passed, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to greater things, what classes you should be taking to prepare you for nursing school? I know I've talked about this in one of my last videos, but I'm going to say it again. If you're in high school, if your class, if your school offers any medical related courses, I definitely think you should take them. Whether it's CPR or medical terminology class, anything that deals with the medical profession will help you. At my high school, we had a medical academy. So taking those classes, I took A&P there. Um, but of course, the rigor wasn't like it is in um, college. It did teach you the basis if you paid attention. But honestly, to me in high school, I was more so worried about graduating. I felt like high school was a waste of my time. So I did what I needed to do to get by. And now in college, I feel like I'm giving it my all and actually paying attention. So A&P helped me a little bit since I took it. But it wasn't like, a, oh, I already took this. I don't have to study type thing. Um, so take medical classes if you can in high school. And take dual credit, not AP classes. Dual credit in the long run helps you out way more than taking an AP class. With dual credit, um, it's basically like a college class on your high school campus. Well, mine was on my high school campus. I know some schools actually go to the community college. But it, they allow you to take your prerequisites like reading, government, I think that's about it they allow you to take i'm not sure but they allow you to take those prerequisites and if it's the right course number to your university um your credit transfers over and you don't have to take that class again that's what we do a credit now if you do an ap class i didn't take ap but what i think it is it's basically like dual credit you take a college level course but then you take a test on it so you know how you take your state examination test you take a um, examination on your AP course and if you get over a certain number that credit applies to your college but if you don't get over that certain number you have to take it again and basically the advantage with dual credit is you take all the classes the tests. you take all the tests throughout the semester pass those tests pass your final boom, you have a credit as compared to AP where you're taking this class the whole semester. Now you finally take the test and you fail it. It's almost like a waste of time. So I definitely say take dual credit. And dual credit helped me out in the long run because I had all my prereqs done. And being that I took summer school, I was already a whole semester ahead before I started school. Um, now, if you're already in college, if you're already in college, um, there is a list of prerequisites. I will probably attach it in the video. I have attached it on one of my last videos. But just a quick order of how you should be taking those classes or how I think you should be taking those classes. Um, so you want to get all of your prerequisites out the way. 
and I say get your prerequisites out the way because it helps you in other classes and also once it gets closer to you going to nursing school you don't want to be sitting in class with a whole bunch of freshmen or like a whole bunch of younger people so I definitely say get your prereqs out the way so your first semester in school you definitely want to take freshman composition one um take your history one um take art take speech and maybe personal finance and of course pick and choose in those courses but I think each semester that you should take a science class but leave anatomy and physiology towards the end and I say leave anatomy and physiology towards the end because all your other sciences literally build up to anatomy and physiology and also um, if you're taking the HESI, the later you take anatomy and physiology, the fresher the material is on your mind and you can apply it to your test. So semester one science class, I think you should take is chemistry. Chemistry helps you in microbiology. So moving on to semester two, I think that you should take micro as your class. And remember with these science classes, you have to take the lecture and the lab. Well, at least at my university. So for semester two, your science should be micro. Go ahead and finish up freshman composition and take fresh, freshman composition two, take history two, take your college algebra, um, maybe take your psych psychology class and maybe your ethics class. Of course, I'll take all these classes together because I think that's like six. So you would have to like pick and choose from one of them. But I definitely think that each semester you should take 15 credits. Take 15 credits each semester. Um, and I'm going off of if you don't have any dual credit or if you didn't take summer classes. Take 15 credits each semester. That way it takes you two years to finish your prereqs, which is what they give you. And um, so that's four semesters. So 15 credits each semester. Um, in semester three, go ahead and start anatomy and physiology. So anatomy and physiology one, um, human development, nutrition, statistics, and government one. I think that you should take statistics after you take college algebra because the college algebra is also builds you up to statistics. The basic rules that you use in college algebra roll over to statistics. Um, and then in semester four, your last semester before nursing school, um, if you're taking your 15 credits a semester, go ahead and finish up with AMP2, finish up with government, and then you know how in each semester I gave you six classes to pick from, you're going to finish the rest of those classes that you haven't already taken in semester four. Um, now, a lot of you guys have been asking me, oh, if I take summer school, what classes should I take? I definitely do not recommend taking your science classes over the summer, as I've stated before, only because science as a nursing major is your foundation. That's what your degree is going to be in, in science. Um, so you definitely want to take those during the semester where you can actually focus on these things. So if you want to take summer classes, take things like art, um, government, history, um, just things that aren't your science classes. That way you can focus on them. Um, I think that's about it on what classes you should take in what order. Of course, if you have more questions or you want to give me your specific, um, what's the word? your specific dilemma that you're in. Maybe you already have credits, you have summer, you're gonna take summer school and you wanna know what classes to take. Of course, DM me on Twitter or comment below. And now I'm gonna make this part of the video really short. And this is why I think you should not withdraw from a university. Of course, unless you have some issues, like some real issues going on, kinda like I did. But this is why I don't think you should withdraw from your university. Um, so when I withdrew from the university, you had to sit down and talk to a financial aid counselor. You had to go talk to your advisor. There's basically just a list of people that you have to go and talk to to make sure you're in good standing to leave the school. Excuse me. When I went to go and talk to my financial aid advisor, she told me I was good. Um, I didn't have to do anything. She signed my paper. I was on my way in and out in like two minutes. Um, unfortunately, I guess this is partly my fault. I should have done my research and I should have known. Um, when you withdraw from a university, they do not hold your scholarships for you. So I had the distinguished scholarship, which basically you get if you have a certain SAT score and a certain GPA. Um, I had scholarships from the general scholarship application. Um, 
basically all those scholarships and even my grants that I was given, they are not held for me, even, even though I was Jew and I'm coming back. Um, and I, they like knew that I was coming back. It's not held for me. So basically with each scholarship or grant that you get, it comes out of a certain account. And once that account runs out of money, there's no more. So let's say even though I did withdraw, that puts money back in that account, but the people over that account want to get rid of that money. So they redistribute the money and they give maybe somebody more money or they give another student my scholarship or my grant. Um, if I want to get those scholarships back or those grants back, I have to go through another appeal process <laughs> um and basically just explain why i left the university um and kind of try to convince them on why i think i deserve this scholarship and this grant back so basically it's easier to just stay at your university don't do like i did don't withdraw Unless, of course, you just absolutely have to and you're in a predicament where you have no choice but to go home. Okay. Now for the very last topic. When to apply for nursing school. Okay, let me see if I can get this to make sense. So, as a nursing major at Prairie View, you have to have 60 credit hours completed before you start nursing school. Now, you know, each semester you want to do 15 credit hours. So let's say I'm staying on track and I'm doing 15 my first semester, 15 my second semester, 15 my third semester, and 15 my fourth semester. By my fourth semester, at the beginning of it, I want to start applying for nursing school. So to apply for nursing school, I think you have to have like 45 credits already completed and be in, pro in, in the process of completing your last 15. So no, you don't have to wait until you're done with all 60 and then apply to nursing school. If you wait till you're done with all 60 and then you apply to nursing school, you're going to be sitting out a semester. Because the way it works with my school, um, you apply for nursing school the semester before you want to start. So I want to start nursing school in the spring. I had to apply by fall to be accepted into spring. Now, let's say you want to start nursing school in the fall. You have to apply by spring to get accepted into the fall. I think I said that right. Um, so by fall and the date was September 1st, I had to have my application in and I had to have everything done by September 1st so I can get accepted and start school in January. Um, I really, really hope that makes sense. So you're not going to apply your first semester. You're not going to apply your second semester. By your third semester, you're still not applying, but you want to be thinking about applying. Um, have things lined up so you can study for your HESI. Have things lined up for your teacher letter recommendations. That way, at the beginning of your fourth semester, um, whether it's over summer break or Christmas break, at the beginning of your fourth semester, you want to go ahead and start working on your application. So now you can ask those teachers for those letter of recommendations. Um, you have to have your HESI done by that date. So you want to have already had your HESI um, completed before you apply. Now with the HESI, I know a couple of you guys have been asking me, how can I find out the dates for the HESI? For my specific university, um, in our nursing building, they have the dates posted for the fall or for the spring. Um, or I think you can look them up online. So you type in whatever school you want to take your HESI at and type in HESI dates for fall 2018 or HESI dates for spring 2019. Um, you don't have to take it at your home university. You can take it at a community college. The prices might vary. Um, but I think that's about it. I still feel like I didn't clear that up when to apply for nursing school. So... You want to apply for nursing school your last semester of your prerequisites. So, excuse me, whether it took you four semesters or whether it took you three semesters, that last semester of your prerequisites, you want to apply for nursing school. So when you're almost done with your prerequisites, at the end of that semester, you know you're going to be done. You want to go ahead and apply at the beginning of that semester. That way, when the semester ends, you already know that you're going to nursing school for that next semester and you don't have to take any time off. If you're still confused about that, please DM me or comment down below and I will answer and try to help to clarify. Um, 
that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you so much. Um, like, subscribe, share this video, and let me know if you have any questions.